so the nice folks at Jelly Art sent me this giant jelly plate. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can just take a peek at how big it is. So this is a 12 inch ruler. So 12 inches goes to here. And then, whoa. So it is 20 inches long and 12. One, two, three, four. Wow. So it is 12 by 16. It's huge. And so because it's so big, I thought this would be the perfect surface to actually print on some fabric. Because one of the issues sometimes when you're working with a jelly plate is that it's awfully small and your fabric is awfully large. Now you can see I haven't ironed this fabric at all. It's totally what it is because I'm lazy. But one of the nice things about printing is you don't actually really have to iron your fabric. So I am using a tub full of fabric paints. I don't think the brand of it matters, but I like this, um, personally, I just like the so soft because it does keep your fabric so soft when you work with it. So I've used this a lot, so I'm not sure how much paint is left in these tubes, but we'll give it a go. We're gonna need a lot of paint to cover this plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that paint out. This paint, uh, I just realized, has glitter in it, so I'm not sure how that's going to work, but I guess we'll find out. Um, I'm using a really big brayer because I want to be able to really cover the surface. And you can see that this paint's going out, and I like to, of course, mix my colors. And this is a totally virgin um, jelly plate so I can see that there's a little bit of beading where normally after you've used it quite a bit, you don't see that kind of thing where the paint seems to almost like wick out. Okay, the glitter is kind of interesting actually. Kind of interesting. Okay, I'm gonna clean off my brayer. And let's see, I think for our first little print here, I'm just going to do a little bit of scraping. And you can use lots of different tools on your gelatin plate. This is a um, catalyst tool. Jelly Arts has a bunch of cool tools. Just a simple palette knife. You can do all kinds of things with. Whatever you want, you can draw shapes, you can wipe away large sections if you wish. You can really, you know, do what you want. This is a plastic knife, which has little teeth. Okay, so I'm gonna take my fabric and I'm going to carefully, I don't want to drag this through at all because I just want it to go flat on now. The paint is coming through the plate. Can you see it on my hands? So not through the, it's coming through the fabric. So I am just going to use a piece of deli paper to go ahead. And one of the nice things actually about the paint coming through the fabric is that I can see where I pushed enough but can you see how I also worked kind of from the center outwards and that's because that fabric wasn't ironed and so I want to make sure that I'm kind of ironing hand ironing it or ironing it with the wet paint so let's see what we've got <laughs> Oh, I will show this to you in more detail, but I want to see if I can get a ghost print. So I'm going to take a clean piece of fabric and see if what I can get off of the remaining paint here. It should be a much fainter print. So again, and now the paint is not coming through the fabric. Um, one of the tools that I sometimes use is this is a Baron, which is used in stamping or um, printmaking. But I find it's a really great tool to go across the top, obviously, of things. You could also use your brayer. You can also use your hands sometimes. 
just want to peel and check. Let's see if that's already dried and that's why I can't get it off, which is a possibility. Okay, so I got some kind of a ghost and I will probably overprint on this, but you can see what the ghost looks like. But you can also see what the first primary print looks like and I think the level of detail is amazing. Look at that plastic knife such cool prints. So I'm going to set this aside to dry and I'm going to print the rest of my fabric and see what happens. fabric dry and I think it's really cool and because it's fabric paint it's not stiff or hard or crunching or anything it still feels like fabric which is so nice um, I think this is one of my favorite patterns just scratching away sort of in an abstract style and I think cutting this fabric up into pieces and making some cool patchworky things you can see what a small piece looks like is gonna be super cool um, this piece was the ghost printing piece, which you can see has lots of different layers underneath. And then at the end, I put on this kind of blue black, uh, thing with squares or voids in it. So you can kind of see the layers through, which is kind of neat. Um, this one again, very cool. I love the way the plastic fork, um, gives this kind of pattern to it. But again, this is one that's going to be, you could actually stitch this as a whole cloth quilt, I think. But you could also just use a portion of it. Let's see, if you made a patchwork where you have this and this. I mean, the nice thing about basically hand painting or hand dyeing your fabric is that you just have all these really custom fabrics. And yet, because the base of all of these fabrics is the same, they kind of go together, right? Because they all have that yellow polka dot in the base. But look what a cool composition that already is. We can actually just take this one too. Let's add in a fourth quadrant. This is the one that was um, the ghost prints and stuff. And now, actually, let's put that here, I feel like. And you already have the start of something cool. Okay, so this one uh, was very tone-on-tone tone for a while. It was kind of just these red-ish um, sort of uh, plus signs, and then I added up the ghost of the blue one over, so it's a little more interesting. And for me, there are parts of it that are more interesting. You can always go back and add more, by the way, especially when it's dry. But I think that's a really just cool piece of fabric, like if that was a fat quarter. I'd be excited and I would buy it. Um, here is one that again has a really interesting shape and sort of some of the scribbles and stuff like that. The paint at the edge of the plate tends to dry more quickly or I tend to apply less paint or something like that. So I do find that the edges are softer, which I don't mind because actually, so I think people feel different ways about it, but I like the idea of being able to use like this see if I can isolate this a little bit more, like this strip of fabric where the paint is kind of fading in and out of it and it feels softer. I think that's kind of nice. Whereas other people want to have just, you know, only something that has a clean and clear paint line like that. So just totally a personal preference. And then this is actually the first one we did and you can see I had mentioned that a new plate will do a little bit of beading and this is the only one that has that beading in it, but it's actually really cool. I wish I could figure out how to do this on purpose, right? It almost, it looks like an organic shape of some kind. But yeah, so super easy. And I love how you can use the big plate to print on. These are sort of fat quarter size pieces of fabric, but you could really do yardage and do some production printing because that thing is giant. And um, it works just like a jelly plate that's, you know, two inches or a jelly plate that's 20 inches. They're all the same thing, and you can really have some cool fun with it. So I hope you will try printing on some fabric with your giant jelly plate. It's really fun and easy.